Hi, my name is Zita Henderson. I'm a minority health and health disparities researcher with a focus on mixed methods research. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of three basic mixed methods research designs and give you some tips on visually describing your mixed methods research design and interpreting mixed methods results. So at the end of this lecture, you'll be able to define mixed methods research and describe the purpose of conducting mixed methods research. You'll also be able to describe three basic, mix, basic mixed methods research designs and the strengths and challenges associated with each. And you'll also be able to visually display mixed methods procedures, results, and rationale for interpretation of findings. So what exactly is mixed methods research? It's defined as a class of research where the researcher mixes or combines quantitative and qualitative research techniques, methods, approaches, concepts, or language into a single study. It integrates the two forms of data by merging them, connecting them, or embedding them within the other. It also gives priority to one or both forms of data. And finally, Mixed methods research incorporates qualitative and quantitative data procedures into a specific research study design, where the study is often framed by theories or philosophical assumptions. Methodological triangulation is the use of at least two methods, usually qualitative and quantitative, to address the same research question. You want to use two methods to address your research problem when a single research method is inadequate to fully answer your research questions, or to ensure that the most comprehensive approach is used to solve a research problem. Next, we'll talk specifically about concurrent and sequential designs, but it's important to note that sometimes in mixed methods research, qualitative and quantitative data are given equal priority, and at other times, one method may be given higher priority or a dominant status over the other. So the two by two figure shows what I mean by both methods having equal priority or one having dominant status over the other. The choice of your methodological emphasis should be based on your research question first and foremost, and which methods allow you to appropriately and comprehensively gain the most insight to address your research problem. The first basic mixed methods research design is the convergent parallel design. It's also referred to as the concurrent design. In this design, the researcher will collect and analyze quantitative and qualitative data separately and merge results of both methods during the overall interpretation. So the purpose of the convergent parallel design is to obtain different but complementary data on the same topic. Its strength is that it's efficient. It lends itself to team research because different team members can work on both methods at the same time. It can gain multiple aspects of a problem from different perspectives. The challenge is that it takes a lot of effort and expertise. You have to consider different samples and different sample sizes. And sometimes it's difficult to merge two sets of data and results in a meaningful way. And sometimes contradictory results can be enlightening or they can be difficult to understand. Quantitative data is needed to understand trends and relationships associated with your research problem, and qualitative data is needed to understand in-depth perspectives of individuals. Together, both methods give a complete, holistic, and comprehensive exploration of the phenomenon being studied. The next basic mixed methods design is the explanatory sequential design. In this design, quantitative data is collected and analyzed first, followed by qualitative data collection analysis, and then the results of both are summarized and triangulated. This design is most useful when a researcher wants to understand the mechanisms or reasons behind trends or results found from quantitative data analysis. You basically want to use your qualitative data to explain your quantitative results. This design should be used when a researcher knows the constructs and variables that need to be explored and has access to quantitative measures and instruments to assess those variables. The researcher has to have the ability to ask and be able to approach participants again for qualitative data collection phase of the study. And this design is also useful when the researcher has new questions that emerge from quantitative data that can't be answered quantitatively. 
And again, here you can see some of the strengths and challenges of doing an explanatory sequential design. The strengths of the phases are distinct and straightforward because one type follows the other. It appeals to quantitative researchers because it begins with the quantitative phase and it's an emergent approach. Challenges is that it's lengthy because you're conducting your research in two phases. And sometimes IRB considerations have to be made because you may not be able to do your interview guide at the beginning of your study because it may change based on your quantitative findings. So you just have to incorporate the consideration that it may take a little more time for IRB approval or you may have to submit an amendment. The researcher also has to decide who to sample in the qualitative phase. And the researcher has to decide which quantitative results need further explanation. The third mixed methods design is the exploratory sequential design. In this design, qualitative data is collected and analyzed first. The results inform quantitative instrumentation, data collection, and analysis, and the results are triangulated and interpreted. An exploratory design can be used when quantitative measures and instruments are not available to help answer research questions, when the relevant variables are unknown, or when there's no guiding theory or framework available to guide their research. So basically, it's to understand what constructs and variables need to be explored with a larger sample size or generalized findings to a larger sample size. Again, the strengths are straightforward, just as the explanatory sequential design was. Um, it makes the qualitative approach more acceptable to quantitative biased audiences, and a qualitative researcher may prefer this design. Um, a new instrument is produced from this design that's meaningful to your research question, and it can make your data more generalizable. Challenge is that, again, it takes time. Um, a new instrument must be developed, which again requires IRB considerations. You need to decide which data to use from the qualitative phase to incorporate into your quantitative measures, and it requires training in instrument development and skill development. So we just discussed the three basic mixed methods research designs, but these designs can vary in a number of ways. Here are two of the most common variations from the three basic mixed methods design. The first is the intervention design. And you use this design um, to study a problem by conducting an intervention or experiment and using qualitative and quantitative data to inform the intervention. In the example, the design starts with a convergent parallel design. The results are triangulated and interpreted to inform the study intervention. After the intervention, quantitative and qualitative assessments are conducted again. And of course, those results will be triangulated and interpreted. You may think of this particular design as a pretest post test that included quantitative and qualitative data and where the data is used to inform the actual intervention. In the second variant design, we have a multi-stage evaluation design, which is used to study over uh, to study over time the study that evaluates the success of a program or activities implemented in a project. In this example, we start with an exploratory mixed methods design. The program is implemented and tested with quantitative measures and followed up with qualitative assessments. And this is just one example of a variation. Again, your methods should always be dictated by your research questions or evaluation questions, and the most useful design for capturing your data should be used. Now I just want to take a couple of minutes to illustrate mixed methodology using a specific example for the next few slides. Because mixed methods designs can get complicated, it's often helpful to show your procedures using a diagram of procedures. A diagram of procedures includes information about the data collection, data analysis, product, and interpretation of the study. When procedures are complex, it's helpful to have a visual diagram or representation of the study procedures to bring together all components of the study. This example is from a study that I conducted. <clears throat> if you study the diagram, you'll see that this is technically a variation of a convergent mixed methods design because the instruments were developed at the same time and the data were collected independently and did not inform the other until analysis. And so although the qualitative data were collected after the quantitative data, the interview guide did not change based on quantitative results as it was pre-developed based on theory and prior literature. 
So the model and aims are shown uh, shown are part of a study that I conducted that examined the relationships between psychological well-being and use of, use of preventive care services in a sample of midlife African American women. The study was guided by an integration of two theoretical frameworks, and this is a resultant theoretical model that you see in your screen. Each box and circle represents a study construct, and the bulleted items under each construct represent variables that were assessed either quantitatively or qualitatively. I always try to develop such a model when I'm designing a study because it allows me to clearly see specifically what data needs to be collected and based on the methods and based on the methods that are best to answer my specific aims, whether the data should be or can be collected quantitatively, qualitatively, or both. It may also be helpful to develop a variables table. This is another visual display that enables you to clearly show which variables you are collecting data on, how they'll be measured if quantitative, which aim they pertain to if you have multiple research aims, and whether the data about the variable will be collected quantitatively or qualitatively. So once you've collected and analyzed your data, you have to be able to either merge the results or see how they inform each other. So again, this example is of a convergent design where quantitative and qualitative data were collected and analyzed separately and the results were merged at the end. One way to compare and contrast results is to juxtapose them side by side as seen in this AIM2 table. The first column shows the themes that were developed from qualitative analysis. The second column illustrates the main quantitative findings related to each construct. You can then compare the results and decide if they converge and tell the same story, if one method expands and gives deeper insight to the other method, or if the results contradict each other or diverge. Determining whether each method converges, expands the other, or diverges will allow you to make further interpretations of your data in answering your research questions. Don't be discouraged if your data diverge or yield contradictory results. This can often shed light on issues, relationships, or variables that have not been explored yet. Or in the case of my study, it highlighted issues with a particular question in my survey instrument where I discovered that the question asked was ambiguous and not clear. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful. Here are some key references and researchers that you can find more information, more in-depth information about research myth methods about mixed methods research. And here are just a couple of questions to test your knowledge about what was discussed. Thank you again for watching.